This is Luke Basic from MMA Fancast. Join just at the end of Brandenburg 18 for 247 Fighting Championships with a very impressive win tonight, Dan Walters. You were kind of the co-main event. You were the third to last fight, two big pro fights, being the last amateur fight. What was it like being that late in the card and being an advanced amateur? It was definitely different. Like it was just weird. Like because I've uh, the first fight, I was the first fight of the night. Right. The second time, I was like third or fourth, and then the last time, I was third or fourth. So just being back there for the, it ended up being a ninth because there's one scrap. But it gets literally back there after a while. You just have to kind of be chill, not get, you know, keep your mind right, get in the zone, but don't overdo it. You know? And you got to conserve. You got to conserve your energy. Because sometimes guys late in the card, they jump rope for an hour or something. You got to conserve your energy. It's so hard. It's like the anxiety. You know? it's, just a, it's like the guys that cut too much weight you know, because they're worried about making the weight. You want to get ready for the fight. You want, you know. The fight ended up being absolutely incredible. You fought Hendricks, who came all the way up from Georgia. It looked like his game plan was to throw haymakers. He was trying to kill him. Yeah. He, he hit you a couple times. He weathered the storm. Up until tonight, both your wins were under one minute knockout. Tonight, yeah. you got a rear naked choke in the second round. Kind of talk about the evolution of your game. Uh, I just feel like the more I get in there, the more comfortable I will be to show the other things, you know, because no matter how hard you train, you're never going to be shirtless in a cage in front of a thousand people. You know? So the more times I get in there, the more comfortable I am to show different skills because got a nice right hand yeah and that's that's one of the advantages as you continue to go up the amateur ranks you're fighting guys with more talent more experience so that actually forces you to grow too oh, yeah. so I, mean, I, I think that i've had i don't think i've had a slouch in any of my fights you know and i think you know that that has just made me be a better fighter all your, That's what I want. Well, and all your wins have come by stoppage. Two TKOs, one submission. Your only loss is a decision to Hoot Lee, who's an absolute stud, right? He's undefeated now, put on an incredible show tonight. What's it like kind of coming up right alongside Hoot Lee? What was your thoughts on his performance tonight? And do you see a potential of re-meeting him in a rematch in the future? It'll be tough because I don't want to cut to 55. But... Um, Oh, that's right. You guys fought yeah, at maybe. 70. Yeah. That's right. He's good at cutting weight. <laughs> so that's the difference. So at one point when it was his debut, your second fight. Okay, so he's under. Yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. Maybe. I'll be fine. Well, let's say we're, not the rematch. What's it like watching his career now that he's at 55? Cool. He's cool. He's a, he's a really cool kid. Like, we're like, I, I haven't really hung out with him outside of his, but we're like basically friends now, you know, we support each other. Sure. But on the other hand, I think that, you know, I want, you know, I want that win. I want that sure, loss back, sure. and I think that a couple different decisions and I get the win, you know, so. But well, decisions but are like that. Decisions, yeah, exactly. you have to rethink all the little aspects. 100%. You know? and just, you know, we both had each other. I had a hurt bad in the first round, you know, so. We had a, that, it's almost, before tonight, because I went, because of the storm that I weathered the night to get the win, that's probably my favorite now, but before tonight, my favorite fight of mine was a loss. Well, you brought it up, so talk a little bit about the storm. It was the first time with ground and pound. He got caught on the ground yeah. with a guy on you throwing ground and pound. Yeah, I actually lost my mouthpiece. It was like putting it back in while we were on the ground. Wow. I grabbed it. Yeah. Well, I did not probably see, see it on the Well, I, I, I didn't see it on, okay, we probably yeah, could on the replay. It popped out. Like, yeah, it wasn't even from him hitting me. It was in a grappling stick. Sure. And then when I went down, I grabbed it. And I, like, something in me just from the my own. Uh, previous amateur fights thought like I was safe for a second because and then while I'm putting it back in I catch two right in straight to the freaking side of the ear and I'm like oh shit and I think that was when I popped out the back back door oh okay that's when you well that actually ended up working yeah. out because you were able to I get thought, out the back I thought door. on the ground I mean I thought in the stand up and I want I don't want to take anything away from Kevin Hendricks that dude is a dog and it takes two to tango and for him to drive up here 12 hours yes. into coming to enemy territory is impressive. Very impressive. I respect that dude a ton. 
but I felt like I was better on the feet and then went on the ground and thought I was better there too. So. Well, that's a great thing to see in the development of your game. You train out of a gym that's a jiu-jitsu yeah. gym, so it's, it's funny. great. Everybody's yes. like surprised. I don't have a strike. Like I don't have a striking base. Like, uh, like I didn't start boxing you know, or do Muay or Muay Thai, Taekwondo. I wrestled. That's what I did for my age. And I played football. And then when I got back into it, I started with jiu-jitsu. And I've just always been able to like throw me in recently. When I started coding, you know, coding it in, training it all the time. Part of your hand throwing, you were a high school quarterback. So how much does your feet and kind of that ability to throw the right hand? Yeah, yeah. And it's just not only with the right hand, but the drop back, like the drop that the quarterback does, the movement in the pocket, all of it is very similar to moving in the paint. Sure, both and the drop back, trusting your feet, leading 100%. with your feet, but also as a quarterback, when you scramble, you can never let your feet get twisted because sometimes that's what happens when people are learning striking from a non-striking background. They cross over. You have to you have to learn to kind of scramble with your base. So and always have your feet on. Absolutely. And that's the same thing with wrestling too. So wrestling is especially because uh, Isaac really, Coach Isaac at the Math Factory, he said to me right before I came out, he said, "You got hard." Like, I, I remember I was tired too after the first time. You know, I was tired. We, we threw hard shots at each other for the whole three minutes, you know. And we got up, we grappled two back and forth, and in between rounds, I thought to my like, I just have hard. I thought the hard. Because you're always in a battle with yourself, too. You know that for any time. Absolutely. There's always the mental game. It was great to see you get the win. You're a fan favorite. You got a lot of support because of the way you fight. Can't wait to see what comes in next. Congratulations, sir. You got it.